Welcome to part 8 of Sailor Moon, another story, and in this episode, we are going to finish up Sailor Mars' chapter. But before we go into the temple, we can actually uh, lie to this guy that's outside. Or tell him the truth, whichever one comes first. Now, if you say yes to this person, He'll just move out the way. But I don't know what it's that for, I'm not sure. But one thing is clear, our next objective is the statue. Because if you talk to the townsfolk, one of them at least, they will actually tell you what to do next. So, here I am once again trying to find that puzzle piece, but unfortunately I can't find it. And I can't find it. That's what my problem is right now. So, since I can't find that missing puzzle piece, talk to the statue here. And, unfortunately, this is the High Priest. This is what I was referring to back in Part 7 about somebody being petrified by somebody being Sailor Mars. I mean, I mean Sailor Mars, sorry. <clears throat> anyway. Since... Sailor Mars was looking for Jedi Stone, apparently somebody beat her to the punch. That someone will appear after this boss battle. But first, we're gonna have to battle the spirit that's within that gem. Because remember, back in part seven, Mars couldn't even get to that gem for some reason. And that's because the monks were about to kick her behind. And now Farid is trying to find out what caused the High Priest's situation, which is confirmed to be Ruby. So now, let's go save him. I mean, there may be some frame rate drops here, and I apologize for that. But... Up oh, there's a the Ruby! Now it's going over by the priest. So let's go beat him. And this is Daisoju. Fire Snake. That's all you need to do. And by the way, you need to be at level 13 in order to beat him. Or else. Yeah. So, in other words. Mars' Snake Fire can actually take this thing down in two hits. And give you a hundred experience points in the process. That's a rather easy boss to say the least. Considering what I'm going to be going through later on... Hey, wait. Hold on. Who's this person? Oh, and by this person, I mean... Her. It's Nurgal, ladies and gentlemen. I can't believe I forgot that bitch's name. But she's here also, just like Naboo, to stop you from finding the Keystones. <coughs> so, since he came here, well, so since she came here, she just picking on Fereg for no apparent reason. And she pretty much stepped on that poor guy. And what's even worse, animal cruelty! I just gotta pick on ravens like that. Wow, what a bitch. So now she's gone to a village uh far of um uh, Yaga village. So for the time being, we freed the high priest. So it's time to find out the biggest bombshell of our stay here. Well, when you're asking for Krita Yuga, she's well he tells you that Yaga Ruin, I mean the Yaga village is no longer there. And they used to worship a place called Jedi. I mean, used to God damn it. As I was saying, they used to worship Jedi. However, the village was burnt to a crisp, like Jedi. 
in the manga. Wow, that guy just have no respect. Even associating yourself with him just allows your village to be burnt to a crisp. But we've got the High Priest's token, and now we're gonna have to return to Yaga Village to find it in ruins. And this is why I told you to buy all the Yaga soup you could possibly get, because... Once you go back to the village after freeing the High Priest, it's no longer going to be intact. Which totally sucks, to be honest. Uh, let's see what accessories I got from that. Nothing? Nothing? Okay. Any items? Ah, that's a rare item. There we go. Well, that token will actually get you into the, uh, area where Jedi's, uh, he stone actually is. Now we're gonna have to actually get out of this temple and go through, uh, <coughs> Yaga Village, or what's left of it, according to the Elder. And yeah, I went up about five levels on the way here, so... That says a lot. And it was a good thing that the Dai Sojo missed the uh, Toxic Mist. Because, goddamn, thanks to Mars's low defense, she would have took some damage. That's why I have Mars with the setup she had. So I could just bla blaze through that part. But yeah, of course. Random encounters. I'm, br I'm stronger than you, so go to hell. And while these guys used to do like 45 to 50 damage, now they're doing 9. Because I grinded up to a lot of levels, by the way. And if you thought these guys would give you experience points, wait till I get to the last part of the stage. Anyway, this is all that's left of Naga Village. I mean, Yaga Village. Why do I keep calling it Naga Village? It's Yaga Village, goddammit. Good news is, out of this though, there is actually a ruby, uh, crown, as well as a, um, uh, Ruby earrings in not Ruby Crown, Ruby Tiara as well as the Ruby Earrings in this hut right here. Where the elder will explain to you that Yaga Village didn't exist at all. The village is only there because she was here. Maybe hints that Jedi actually had a relationship with her in, uh, the manga. But in the anime, I mean, the only interaction he had with her was the fact that she, he was hired on the job because he thought she was beautiful. But, yes, folks, it's really sad that, uh, a village dedicated to worshipping Jedi... Oh, yeah, Ruby Bristol, that's what it is. And a Ruby Tiara. There we go. Let's go ahead and equip those anyway. As I said, it's really sad in a uh, village dedicated to worshiping Jedi uh, got crushed really badly. Now, as you can see here, because I put on the uh, Ruby bracelet and the Ruby uh, Tiara. Mars' defense and speed went up dramatically. Jesus. But her attack is going to be ridiculous. Let me go check to see if I can find any puzzle pieces. If I missed out on him, I'm going to be really upset. I'll just get him again off screen. No, wait. No, I can't really. That playthrough would be over by then. Looks like I won't be getting that Imperial gift after all. But in all honesty, at least the village burned down, 
Well, it could have been worse. It could have had a plane running over. And no, that wasn't meant to be offensive. That's what happened to Jedi in the anime. He got hit by a plane. Anyway. Let's go on ahead and leave. I was just checking to see if there's anything here, and as you can see, if you walk into the house, you'll have, uh, different themes. Here, let me show you. Well, I thought it was different. That was really weird, by the way. I, I think this is the only place that does it. Okay, everybody's gone, I know. <clears throat> Even for Egg's house is gone. Now then. I found the puzzle piece. I'm not sure, but let's get on out of here. There's nothing else here. And just for the record, we're gonna run into some more enemies. Yep. Now then, let's show off what happens when I put on this ruby equipment. Yep, I'm wrecking shit, and that's how it's supposed to be. As opposed to me getting wrecked. Yeah, these are all one second fights, by the way. I know it may seem boring for a while, but hey, that's what's going on. One sided curb stompings here. We're almost at the cave. Oh, and there's a place to save just in case you run into any trouble. Ah, I love doing that. Might as well save, because I don't want anything else to happen to my save file. Alright. Into the game I go. And, upon going in, Phobos will come and, uh... Pretty much follow you while you go and find um Fred. Okay, let's see if we got new enemies. And we do. Anti Tempest A and B. Yeah, they're dead. But they shell out lots of experience points. Jesus Christ. And lots of yin too. Like between 500 and a thousand yen to be honest and I can certainly use that yen and the experiments trust me by the time you get to Nergal more than likely you'll be between level 15 or level 16 so far at this point Mercury's at a higher level which means if we all end up coming back together Mars will end up having to go through some training Wow. Certainly crush those guys. Now then. They put a lot of save points here. Because they expect you to lose to Nergal. And they expect you to try to rush through this and hopefully lose. But, in all honesty, all the grinding you do makes a difference. Dead! And Mars gained more level. Awesome! Let's keep on going! And let's run into trouble! And 
And they're dead too. Don't worry, eventually I'll run into new enemies. But notice Mars's HP! Jesus Christ! Take real good notice of Mars's HP, it's 300! Now that's what's up! Alright, let's try to go this way. No, well, wrong way, you idiot! Yeah, while you think 300 is really high, it can go higher than that, you know? I think the highest level that you could go is probably in the 60s. That's what I think. More than likely, you'll need to be at that area near the end of the game. Alright, let's keep going. And I hope I didn't get another life water. Because I've got 78 of those as is. Alright. Let's keep going, please. No, we got Yasa water. Let's see something here. Wow, I'm almost at the next level, as you can hardly see. Between 30 and 60 a pop. Experience points. I'm almost at level 14 and I haven't even gotten to Nergal yet. And dead! As you can already see, this is actually easy. Once you get the ruby equipment, or the equipment of any birdstone, god damn it. Let's see something here. You know what? Honestly, I would show off Fire Soul Bird or Fire Soul, but uh, yeah. I'll do that later. Wait, no, honestly, I should do that now. Alright. Just gotta keep spamming, are you? Like spamming those random encounters, but then again, the luck is pretty bad, so they're gonna keep coming. Four, just what I like. 65 eight, I mean, experience points is a good thing. He gave me a lot of loss of water here. And for those of you who don't know what loss of water is, loss of water is about 80 HP in recovery. And Yaga Soup recovers your health completely. Not bad. Oh, and by the way, speaking of not bad, we found the dead end, which actually needs the priest's token, which shall reveal a cave. And that'll lead to Nergal, but first, there's another route that I need to see. Now then, where exactly this route leads? Uh, same way the bottom path did, probably. And I'm just making sure, by the way. Dead. And Mars got up another level. I know, it's ridiculous, but hey. All the grinding that I'm doing, and I shouldn't be doing this on screen, but, uh... They're really short fights, as opposed to the long-winded fights in Part 7, because the enemies were stronger than I was. And now, we've come to this new area, which will be fighting a new wave of enemies. But for the time being... We're in... Uh, God damn it! what the hell is that village name? I already forgot its name. We'll just call it the Village of Jedi. Why, you may ask? Because their lord and savior is forever immortalized in a statue. <laughs> ha! It's funny because he's immortalized in a crystal. Sent to the depths of space in eternal sleep. <laughs> ha! Uh, on a serious note, though... 
you can't really enter the buildings as I'm gonna sh I was gonna show you, but we're attacked by Octave and whatever the hell that thing was. I forgot its name. Because it's gonna die anyway. So now we got a new set of villains, which will give us only 56 experience points. As opposed to 65, but hell, that's a lot of experience points, though. Uh, doesn't matter, though, because the more experience points I get, the more levels I get, the more levels I get, the easier Nergal is going to be. Preferably, you should be at level 15, 16, because Nergal will actually hit you really hard. Oh, Curini, that's what the name of that monster is. Doesn't matter, she's dead. And in case you're wondering, Kirini is a droid from the second season, and Octave is a diamond from the third season. Anyway, oh god, I, I, I should climb up the stairs. I really should. That's where we need to go. And I'm not doing that. Uh, any reason why I'm not climbing up the stairs? Yep. I'm going to be here for a while. God damn it. Oh, I think I know what I'm doing. Because these guys drop Alarm C and Cologne, it's best to kill them too. That's probably what Passney was doing. <coughs> and mind you folks, Cologne C is for confusion, and Alarm Clock is for sleep. So these things dropping colognes and um alarm clocks is really good. However, they're gonna keep coming. And they're gonna keep dropping. Yeah, yeah. Keep doing that, guys. Now then, I think I've got enough level from here. Up the stairs we go. No, get up there. Thank you. These are some odd stairs, you know. Now all we need to do is go up to the highest point. Okay. Up the stairs. There's nothing of importance here. Let's just keep going. Oh, safe ball. Awesome. I could use one of those. And... Wow, this theme is going to keep playing, and I do believe this is like the Japanese version of the, uh, trick theme of Sailor Moon. But now we're facing Nergal, who, by the way, thankfully does not do that bullshit with Naboo. <coughs> I meant like with Naboo. And what bullshit we're talking about? We're about to get into a straightforward fight. She has Jedi T-Stone, and all we have to do is beat him. No, beat her. So there's not much we could do but to fight her. And let me assure you, Nergal does hit hard, but at least, at least. You don't have to worry about uh, a high defense boost because attacks actually do damage, as does her physical attacks. So let's use uh, our fire snake again. And by the way, your goal has about 250, just so we're clear. So she's almost dead in the next couple of hits. So let's go on ahead and use lipstick. I might want to use some life water too. Yeah, let's use a life water. Oh no! She has that too. Which, if that hits, 
will render Mars confused. Yeah, that is a dangerous thing. Oh, she also has Toxic Mist. Oh, goody. No! So far, my luck's been good. Let's hope it stays that way. Alright. Let's use some more lipstick. Oh, Whirlwind Cut, which actually does more damage! Hooray! But that's all of uh, Nergal's move in a nutshell. She's... Uh, rather... How should I put it? She seems rather easy. But let's show off Fire Bird Soul. I mean, Fire Soul Bird, actually. It may not do much to her, but it's enough to take her out. <coughs> and with that, we've got Mars another level. Yeah, you despise my streak because I kicked your ass. Hopefully next time I fight you, my team will be there to kick your ass. And now we get a flashback. And just so we're clear, no, she's not going to come back with a higher defense to come and attack us like Naboo did back in Part 6. This is the end of Mars' chapter. All we have to do is sit through a couple of cutscenes. <coughs> Yes, uh, Nergal is being lured to the dark side. Because, well, Nergal is stupid. As is Naboo. But if anyone's stupid on that team, it's Ishtar. So, yeah, this is the backstory of how Nergal joined Anshar. Absolute and sure, whatever. I'm not sure. So, <clears throat> uh, without further ado, we're almost at the end of this part. I mean, Mars is very cutscene heavy, but damn. Now then, <coughs> Nergal makes a death threat that Mars is her target, and of course, Ferenc's in the other room, unconscious. Well, since Phobos and Davos are put together, we can now leave. And we found Ferenc. And now for the real kicker, <clears throat> Ferenc's the last ghost that needs to pass on. Or maybe I've done this wrong, I'm not sure. Well... What do you expect about a place that's pretty much made in the image of Jedi? And now, the poor kid, he's finally disappearing. Wait, now she's starting to be full tsundere, like, I have to be a ghost just so I can understand you! I don't believe you're not a ghost! <clears throat> then again, Mars is the tsundere type, but I still like her. I do. Even though my favorite soldier is Venus. Don't let anybody know that. Anyway, so he was pretty much brought here into the village, and he was at the wrong place at the wrong time. And the Kritayuga village was pretty much uh, burned to the ground, along with the Yaga village, because people attacked it. And so, all the 
uh, prayers pretty much made the poor guy look like Jedi. In other words, he was the prayers of the villagers. And those prayers almost cor were corrupted courtesy of Nergal. So that's the whole gist of this entire... Okay, I know it doesn't make sense, but that's the whole gist of this entire village. And now... Poor Mars. He's tragic. She's tragically crying. And her mission is done. So, two up, two down. And thankfully, I didn't get curb stomped. You wanna let me. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. If it wasn't for that setup back in part seven that I had, I got curb stomped when I actually did this. As a matter of fact, this is my second attempt, believe it or not. And the second attempt was better than the first. So, yeah, there's that. And thus, Jedi stands the watchful guardian of a ruined city that was burnt to ashes, just like he was in the manga. And ladies and gentlemen, that is it! We're done with Mars' chapter. So the next one up for bid is Jupiter. And I've got enough yen to spare for her too. So let's put some equipment on her so I won't forget. Because chances are I will not be able to get out of an event. I'll put a necklace on. And a bracelet. 